Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Drama, comedy, adventure, mystery, melodrama. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. We all daydream. I remember that as a child, I wanted to be Florence Nightingale... And I'm afraid I missed some of my earliest arithmetic problems because I daydreamed caring for the sick and infirm. I built the biggest bridge in South America instead of mowing the lawn. Shirley Gordon, who wrote tonight's play, Call Me a Cab, also has pursued this pleasant avocation, and she wrote some of it down. And we're going to do it for you right now. Kathy? Our story starts with me. I'm in my apartment. It's very neat, my apartment. Tidy. Place for everything and everything in its place. And it's very empty. When I'm in it, I spend a lot of time looking out the window without knowing quite what I'm looking at or looking for. Like today, when it's my day off and I finish doing everything I had to do, my apartment's clean, my clothes are in order, my hair and my nails are done. I've just finished the last chapter of the book I was reading. So I look out the window, and I see the day that I don't know what to do with. Take a walk. Go to a show. Window shop. Don't waste a day, Julie. Not another one. It's your life. This is Miss Benson. Would you call me a cab, please? I'll be right down. Put on a bright lipstick and your best hat. Don't let the world know you're a girl with no place to go. Close the door on your tidy, silent apartment. Take the elevator and continue your train of thought. Write a book about it. Call it 101 Tried and Proven Ways to Waste a Day. Add them up and it's 28 years. Going on 30. Going on 40. Going on 50. Going, going, gone. Today, take a cab and window shop on a good day to waste. Look at people using it. Study what they find to do with it. Uh, Miss Benson? Yes. You called a cab? Where to, Miss? Just, uh, drive around the park, any place. Okay, Miss. You say when. Which is the cab fare to a lonely day and back? It costs a lot more than it shows on a meter. Funny day, isn't it? Looks like it can't make up its mind what it wants to be. Good or bad? No. Can't tell. That's right, you can't tell. Too early yet. Might rain, might not. Mm-hmm. No, it's too early to tell. Miss Benson, huh? Wonder where the boyfriend is today. Yeah, working, I guess. A girl like that wouldn't be without a guy unless he was working. Unless maybe she hasn't got a boyfriend. Nice looking girl. Nothing better to do than ride around in a cab, spoiled. 
That's what's the matter. You can't find a guy who can handle her. Tell her the facts of finance. Tell her there's more important things than riding around in a cab, spending money. A girl like that, all she needs is to have someone tell her. Come in. Thanks. What were you doing? Reading. A book? This one? You lost your place. I finished it. Any good? Love story? How'd it end? Happy? Boy gets girl? Wasn't that kind of a book. Then what'd you read it for? Why don't you read my kind of book, Julie? It's a love story with all the works. Happy ending. Boy gets girl. You'd like it. How do you know? Because I wrote it for you. Joe, if you wrote the book, then why did you let the girl get so unhappy? And Maybe it? because the girl is asking to be unhappy. She's too hard to please. She wants the rich, handsome prince on a white horse. So when somebody else shows up in his place and he isn't rich or handsome, and he's driving a cab instead of riding a horse, she smiles at him, tells him not to come any closer. Joe, that isn't the way it is. I told you, the money doesn't matter. If it isn't the money, then it's me. And it's still like I said, you want a storybook hero. And a storybook romance. No, Joe, I'm grown up. I know better. Then look at me, Julie. Write at me. Not through me to a dream that doesn't exist. I'm here. And I'm flesh and blood, and I'm close to you. This close. And when I reach out my hand and touch you, like this, my hand is real. Flesh and blood. Maybe it's sweaty, sometimes dirty. But it means one thing, that I'm a human being and not perfect. I say things right and I say them wrong. I'm kind and I'm cruel. I'm all things, some good and some bad. Just the same as you, Julie. Just the same as you. Look at me now, Julie. Really see me. Know that I'm here with you. And know that I'm no more than I am. But that I love you. Can't you see, Julie? Can't you see? Oh, Joe. Joe, my darling. Whoever do I think I am. Please forgive me. Sure you're seeing me for real. No white horses. No white horses, darling. Just kiss me for real. I love you. Being no more than I am. Being no less than you are. I love you, Joe. Hey, what you want? Where you going, you... What? How about that guy? Some people think the streets were made just for them. Real road hogs all over the place. Uh... Sorry if I frightened you. No. No, that's all right. Hey, looks like we're in for some rain, all right. Really starting to come down all of a sudden. Can't say I mind it. Good weather for my business. But then that's the way it is. What's a good day for me is bad for other people. Rain can spoil a day for a lot of people. Me, I like it. Good for my business. Yes. It's always hard to get a taxi on a rainy day. Rain or shine, it's a day. A day to find something to do with. So you share it with a stranger who speaks without turning his face to you. Look at the picture on his identification card and wonder what sort of man goes with that polite voice from the front seat. He talks about the weather. That's all. Not a bad face. Oh, of course. No handsome prince on a white horse, he. I wonder what sort of life he lives when he takes off that cap and becomes something else besides a cab driver. I wonder what sort of girl he's something else, too. I wonder if they got married and found it an end to being lonely. I wonder if I'd like to trade places with her. 
That you, Joe? Yeah, honey, it's me. Sorry I'm late. Last fare I picked up took me clear back across town. Hello, darling. Yeah. Huh. I'm tired. Mm. Hmm? You're not tired. <laughs> not of you, baby, never. Can I ask you tonight? Tonight? Mm-hmm. Come on, let's eat. The live will be here any minute. Hmm. Well, I'm not putting my shoes back on. Since when have you ever even considered playing canasta with your shoes on? You got some ketchup? Oh, Joe. Such a good roast. Why do you spoil the taste? Well, I told you before, pork without ketchup is like... Uh, like ham without eggs. Or canasta without shoes. Mm. Who won the last time? We did. How much? I don't know. Not much. And gravy good? It's just right. How can you tell when you let the ketchup run into it like that? Hmm. How was business today? Fair. Pretty day. Days like this, people should walk. I did. Through the park. Mm. It was awfully pretty. So green after the rain. If it's nice Sunday, let's walk. I feel cheated when you walk without me. So do I. We'll walk Sunday. Rain or shine. Stop by the zoo today? Sure. Gave Oswald your love. He spit at me. Well, shame on Oswald. There's a new little baby monkey. There's a cute little peanut head with big, sad eyes. Oh, yeah? We'll go Sunday. All yeah, right. Want some more potatoes? Mm-hmm. What else did you do today? Uh, uh, shop for groceries. You know, snacks for tonight and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm. I ran into Alice Duff, you remember? That's the girl who took my job when I quit, and she told me all about how things are going down at the agency. No. Oh. Well, how are things going down at the agency? Betty in the front office is wearing her hair in new color. Well, what color it used to be? I can't remember. Red, I think. No. Mm-mm. That's what Alice says it is now, so it must have been some other color before. Green? Nice color. Park's very green. You'll see, Sunday. Yeah. So what else is new? Besides a baby monkey and Betty in the front office's new hair? Yeah, sure. Well, let's see. I know. I'm mad at you. <laughs> you are, huh? Mm-hmm. Tastes like a bottle of ketchup. How come you're mad at me? No, wait, let me guess. Um, it's our anniversary and I forgot, and you think I don't love you anymore, so you're going home to Mother right after Canasta tonight. Guess again. Um, you've developed a guilt complex. You think you're a wicked, sinful girl who ought to be punished because you've been living with a married man, so you're going to leave me and go off and be a monk. A monk? Like Oswald. Huh? And spit at people. As a last guess, and if you miss, you dry the dishes. And if I win one? I dry the dishes. You wash them. Yeah. Uh, you're mad at me because you're wearing your hair a new color, and I didn't notice it wasn't red anymore. You're very warm. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're wearing your hair a new color, and I didn't notice it wasn't green anymore? You're getting warmer. I'll give you a hint. Mm, I can't accept charity. Congo claw. That's not fair. You have to give the hint in English. I told you you were warm. I'm wearing my nails a new color. You didn't notice. Congo claw. That sound exotic? Sounds threatening. I put it on for canasta. You look beautiful when you meld. <laughs> what time are they supposed to be here? What time is it now? It's 20 of. Can he eat peanuts yet? Who? Oh, oh, the new little baby monkey? Sure. He's awful cute. We'll go Sunday. Even if it rains... What'd you say, miss? What? What? Oh, the rain. I said the park's so pretty when it rains. Would you turn back and drive through it again? Sure, miss. You name it. Anything you want. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Call Me a Cab. Every day of the year, the Red Cross is helping humanity somewhere. Servicemen rely on it. Disaster victims owe their lives to its prompt help. Communities everywhere know its day-by-day services. All these countless ministries are financed by your contributions. Won't you answer the call to make this year's contribution larger than ever?
that this rain's going to make a lot of people unhappy. They plan picnics, baseball games, things like that, then it rains. Yes, it's too bad. It spoils their day. That's right. Families, kids. Rain can spoil things for them. Yes, it can. Can it? Can just a little rain spoil things when your cup runneth over? When you're not alone anymore? And there's so much to share between you. I wasn't home. Oh. But I was so glad you're home. I'm just dying to talk to somebody. It seems hours before Joe will be coming. What's up anyway? You sound like the cliche cat that swallowed the canary. <laughs> well, it won't be long before I'll look like I swallowed something a lot more substantial than a canary. What? Uh, Julie, you... Then you've been to the doctor's. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Well, I just came from the doctor's. Oh, Helen, I'm so glad. And Joe's going to be just out of his mind when he hears. Well, does he have any idea? No, no, not an inkling. I wanted to wait. Yes, yeah, sure, but break it to him gently. I understand these things can be very hard on husbands. Huh. I've seen it in the movies, but I'm not sure I can remember just how it's supposed to go. I can. W- wait, wait a second, will you? I, I want to get a cigarette. Yeah, me too. I'm back. Yeah, well, here's the way it goes. The husband has a hard day at the office, you see. Yeah. And he comes home to his little wife, who has this big secret under her uh, belt. (laughs) Yeah. So, he comes in the door and he hangs up his hat and coat. And, of course, he's expecting the usual big hello, darling, from her and the big welcome kiss, like he always gets. Only this time, there's nothing. This time, he comes into the room and she just stands there, looks at him, doesn't say a thing. Poor guy. And so he says, hello, honey. Still, she doesn't say anything. Just keeps looking at him. Then what? Well, the more she stands there and looks at him, the more worried he gets. So finally he asks, honey, what's the matter? And she says, guess. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh, isn't that just (laughs) awful? Deliver me from ever in this world doing anything like that to Joe. Imagine. The greatest thing in the world happens to you, you make your husband play a guessing game to find out what it is. Yes, wait a minute. You haven't heard the worst. What happens is he guesses wrong and he says, Honey, whatever's the matter, it isn't true. I didn't do it. Oh, no. So, of course, she gets suspicious because he's got such a guilty conscience. And on the happiest day of their life, they end up having a big fight. You made it up. (laughs) But just the same, that's not the way I'm going to break the news to Joe. I want to use the one where the husband, as soon as he finds out, um, lowers his wife gently into a chair and never lets her touch a vacuum cleaner or a dirty dish for the rest of her life. At least, at least not for the next nine months of it, you know? I'll tell you what, why don't you go out and get some pink and blue yarn and be knitting when he comes in? He'd ask me whose baby shower I was going to. <laughs> How about drinking eight glasses of milk at dinner? He'd notice when you started looking homogenized. Oh, I know. Why don't you wait until midnight and do the old dill pickle and ice cream bit? That's the hard way, I'd say, but sure fire. Oh, I couldn't possibly wait until midnight. I want to tell him the second he comes through the door if I can only locate my tongue at the time. <laughs> well, let him sit down first, honey. It's only fair. I will. Honestly, Julie, it, it's just wonderful. I'm so happy for you both. Thanks, Helen. Don't, don't hang up yet. Won't Joe be home any minute? Yeah, but... Uh, I'll I... talk to you later. But I still don't know how I'm going to tell him. You will. Bye, honey. Congratulations. Thanks. Me, honey. Hi, honey. Honey? Oh, Joe. Guess what? I guess it stopped raining. What? Uh, Oh. Yes, I guess it has. Yeah, it looks like it's going to clear up. That's good. Yeah. Not so good for my business, but nice for the people. Now they can have their picnics and ball games. Uh Uh-huh. You just watch. 
15 minutes from now, the park will be packed with people. I suppose so. That's always that way. As soon as it stops raining, everybody comes to the park. I don't blame them. It's so pretty after the rain. You just wait and see. 15 more minutes and all you'll hear is dogs barking and babies crying. <laughs> I know. As soon as it stops raining, everybody who's got a baby comes to the park. Everybody in the world who's got a baby. Dr. Surrey, call surgery. Uh, you want to look at this one here? Yes, thanks. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. I've been looking at it for an hour now, and I guess I couldn't tell you what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this your first two? That's right, it is. Don't look like it should be, I suppose. <laughs> been married for 14 years, Blanche and me. I couldn't believe it when the doctor told us. I just couldn't believe it. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's wonderful. <clears throat> You and your wife been married very long? Uh, a little over a year is all. Oh, gee, that's wonderful, too, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aren't you wondering what it's going to be? Oh, no, no, after this long, it'll be a baby. Oh, sure. It's... It's wonderful. <laughs> you ought to see Blanche. She's, she's just as radiant as a bride. Well, you can imagine... Oh, sure. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Hey, listen, that, that, that sounds like the nurse is coming. Yeah. No, I guess not. That no. I, I guess it won't be much longer, though. No, I, I, I wouldn't think so. Crazy. A couple of years ago, I sure wouldn't have thought I'd be sitting here, in this room, watching that clock, caring this much. My wife's name is Julie. Oh, gee, that's a nice name. My wife's name is Blanche. Blanche? Wonderful name. <laughs> yes. Uh, listen, I... Yeah, to... somebody's coming. Mr. Carson? Is that you? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Henry Carson, yes. Uh, <laughs> nurse... Would uh... you like to see your son, Mr. Carson? Hey. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Carson. Congratulations. My wife. Oh, she's just fine. You'll see her, too. You just come along with me. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And, and you, too. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, nurse. Oh, I guess it's not your turn yet. I believe Nurse O'Connor's with your wife. She'll let you know. But you may have to have a little patience. Sometimes there's quite a long wait. Uh, this way, Mr. Carson. Uh, you're Miss O'Connor? Yes. Would you come along with me, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, is it a boy or a girl? Uh, aren't you going to tell me before I see... Oh, and Julie, my wife. Your wife's all right. Baby hasn't been born yet. But... Oh, you mean it's too soon? I know sometimes, especially when it's your first... Uh, <laughs> do we have to go home again and come back some other time? No, it'll be tonight. Well, then... There's something the matter, isn't there? No, no, you mustn't be frightened. It'll be all right. It's only that your wife's having not too easy a time just now, and the doctor... You said she was all right. She is. She will be. It'll just be good if she knows how near you are. Oh, well, sure. She should know that. I'm right here. It's this room. Doctor... Oh, yes. Uh, doctor. Now, wait a minute, young man. Don't you go getting excited. Everything's all right. It's only that your wife became a little frightened. Yes, sir. We want her to quiet down, but I think you can do that for us. Just listen to what she's saying and answer her. We don't quite understand, but uh, I think you will. Come with me. Julie? Joe. Joe. You, you've, got, you've got to come with me. There's a little baby. 
You've got to see him. He's so new and so little. Feed him peanuts, darling. We'll see him together. Joe, next time you come with me. Julie, honey, I'm with you now. We're going to see the baby together. It's raining. No, Julie, no, no. The sun's coming out. Baby's crying. What? Where? Over there in that buggy beside the bench, I guess. It's all right. There's the nurse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're on the other side of the park. Uh, you want me to turn back again? No, no, I, I think I'll walk back. The park's so pretty after the rain. So green. That's, uh, 325, miss. Yes. Here you are. Keep the change. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy your walk. It may turn out to be a nice day. Might even be a little sun later on. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Well... Call Me a Cab, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. The excitement comes your way in four separate packages, wrapped and delivered by CBS Radio Saturday nights. Don't miss the Gene Autry Show with its adventures and melodies. And this Saturday, Tarzan finds thrilling adventure in the heart of Africa. Gangbusters continues its four-part saga of modern Western outlaws and their battle with the law... And there's still another exciting experience awaiting you with Marshal Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke. Yes, they're all yours for gripping Saturday night adventure on most of these same CBS radio stations. Now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Our thanks tonight to Shirley Gordon, who helped us dream of what might have been. To Howard McNear, who became the father of a fine boy. To Mary Jane Croft, who helped me plan ways of telling a husband he's about to be a father. And to Peggy Weber for capable and cool practical nursing. Next week, the problem that occurs when a girl tries to get rid of a man she knows casually, but who thinks their relationship is more serious than it is. E. Jack Newman wrote the script. It's called Eddie, and we'll present it next week. Until then, thanks for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed by Fred Steiner and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble. Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. And remember, listen while you work. Enjoy Road of Life every Monday through Friday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.